See, I think it'd be hard to go anywhere in science education and not find someone who's heard of the five E's. Yes, I think that's true. The exciting thing for us is that our BSCS elementary school science team in the mid-late 1980s actually developed the instructional model in an off-site retreat. So what do you remember most about that time? Well, what I recall is that we were just beginning the development of our elementary school science program, Science for Life and Living, and we had a great project team and a great leader. Our PI was Roger Bybee, who was associate director of BSCS at the time, and he decided that we should all learn a lot more about constructivist learning theory. Right. Remember, we read a lot of articles, mm -hmm. lots of background, had a lot of discussions, and then he decided to take us on a retreat off-site with our project team to think about coming up with an instructional model that we could use then to... Drive the curriculum yes. development, really. Right. And I also remember that we did a lot of study of the SKIS program mm -hmm. because um, Roger had either worked with or studied under Bob Karplis and really knew that learning model well. But then we wanted to grow it into an instructional model. More than a learning cycle. Yeah. And what I recall, when I was in graduate school, I was an elementary teacher, as you know, and when I was in graduate school, we studied all of the reform-based mm -hmm. science programs of the 60s. And I knew quite a bit about SKIS and the instructional model, as did some others. And one of the things I know we talked about was the difficulty of remembering the stages right. of the Karplus atkins skis learning cycle. Yeah. It was the words didn't make as much sense. Correct, because it was exploration, invention, and discovery, which people didn't connect with conceptual development. Right. They wanted students, the kids to invent a thing more than an idea. Right. That The idea was that students would explore a concept, then the teacher would help them what they called invent the concept, mm -hmm. which was come up with their own understanding of what the scientific concept really meant. And then the discovery phase was more of an application, can they use it in practice, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. But it was cumbersome somehow, and most teachers who used the program just didn't internalize what that meant that yeah. learning cycle. Yeah, so I remember one of Roger's challenges to us was to make that sort of learning theory more accessible in the classroom. Definitely. And since we were focused on elementary, that meant accessible for the teacher. So where, where did we go next in our work? Well, what I recall in that day, one of the um, charges that Roger gave us, which initially we thought was kind of interesting, that he didn't care how many phases we came up with. Mm -hmm. It didn't have to be three, no limit was really put on it, yeah, but although I think it wasn't we all going thought, to be 10. Right? Yeah. He said, whatever we come up with, all the phases had to start with the same letter. <sighs> I remember that. And it just seemed like such a trivial thing at the time, and right. like a forced yes. focus. But in the long run, he was exactly right. Mm -hmm. And so what I recall is that we wrestled with, first, the exploration, invention, and discovery, mm -hmm. and then thought through other terms and things that made sense to us about helping students construct their understanding over time. And map to the research that we had read. Yes, definitely. And what I recall is that we could not find any other word that expressed what students did in the exploration phase mm -hmm. that was any better yeah. than the word explore. Yep. And I so that's, that. that's why we ended up with ease. I remember that we thought if we started at exploration, we were skipping a key piece mm -hmm. of what we had read about in the literature that had to do with um, how you got a kid focused on the idea right. in the first place. And so from there, we started out with the engage. So I think we were using the word elicit for a while before we um, landed on the E words. Yeah. And, and I remember wrestling a lot with elaborate. And also, I think, with explain, because what we were worried about with yes. explain is some of what's come to pass, which is that people think the explain part is just for the teacher to explain to the student what the science really is and move on. But it's really for the student to develop an explanation and be able to argue about mm -hmm. how he or she thinks about yeah. the concept. Well, we've had a similar challenge with evaluate as mm -hmm. well. That it's not just about the teacher assessing the kid, it's about the learner evaluating his or her understanding. Yes. And then the wonderful thing was that, you know, we, we came up with the words, I think, in that one day meeting. But we didn't know at all how to put them into action right. initially. 
Well, and originally we had them all as nouns. Yes, Engagement, that's correct. Engagement, yes. exploration, right. explanation, elaboration, evaluation. Yes. And gradually we changed them into verbs. Um, so that's one of the key changes I remember from that mm -hmm. first, that initial focus on the five E's. What are some other things you remember about how the five E's have changed over time? Well, one thing, initially we focused only on, well, the five E's were about student learning, mm -hmm. but the teacher was the one who enacted the E's, and were, the teacher was supposed to help them come alive for the students and really monitor in his or her mind where the right. students were and which phase they were in. Another special feature of science where life and living is its instructional model. We have incorporated an instructional model that's referred to as the five E's. The five E's are engage the learner. So what happened to the ones that turned over over here? Sometimes they don't make it to the bottom of the cup. Allow the learner to explore. Mm, looks like there's diamonds in there. Now it's blue again. Explain the concepts. The one thing scientists do is they make a graph. Elaborate the concepts. Maybe when it's wet, maybe when it's wet, it soaks. And to evaluate the concepts. How can it be both hard work and fun at the same time? And the longer the teacher uses the five E's, the more he or she sees the richness of it, I believe. There was a young teacher, and I don't remember where he was from, but he was a great field test teacher and we had visited his classroom and he came in to one of our advisory board meetings, a follow-up meeting, to talk about what he was doing with the instructional model. And he said, well, he didn't think there was any reason to keep it secret from the kids. <laughs> so he actually taught the model, put it on the board, had all the e-words written down, and the funny story that I remember is that he went up to one of his students who was working on something, busily, busily working on something, and he, st he stopped to ask the student some questions. And the student looked at him and said, excuse me, Mr. Smith, this is not the time. I'm still exploring. <laughs> and, and it was just that the kids seemed to know what phase yeah. they were in. Children develop skills in solving technological problems and awareness of how classroom activities apply to their real world. Here we go. Yes! <laughs> you did it! Let me get you a certificate because you're real plumbers. And that is what moved us to make sure we included all of the phases of the instructional model in the student materials as well as the teacher materials. Yeah. And really, since about 1990, they've been explicitly labeled. Mm -hmm. And more than that, everything we've done for, I would say, about grade six on, we not only label it, we help the kids. They have an experience at the beginning of the yes, year right. to consciously learn the five E's and understand how this has to do with their learning. Mm -hmm. And if you think about the information and how people learn, Mm -hmm. and what it has to say about metacognition. Yes. I think we laid the groundwork for teachers to be able to work with kids on metacognition right. and paying attention to how they're learning while right. they're learning science. And you may want to say something about the chart we developed ah, for the teacher yes. and the student. Yes. That actually was brilliant. It's one of my favorite pieces, especially once I started doing professional development and working with teachers to more thoroughly enact the five E's. And that had to do with the chart that I think originally was a column that said what the teacher does and then was broken out mm -hmm. by each E. And I think the second column was I what think, the student does. I think you're right. And over time, we actually had to break it into two charts because for the teacher, we needed a, what the teacher doesn't do during this phase. And similarly, we needed that same column for students. And when we would work with teachers, I think that helped them understand what instructional moves make more sense for using mm -hmm. the five E's appropriately. Right. And at one of the key things I remember is that we were really trying to help teachers see that it wasn't to their students' benefit to introduce all the vocabulary right. up front. Yeah. And that's still a hard nut to crack. It mm -hmm. doesn't mean that we don't want students to know scientific language, but they need to build it themselves over yeah. time so that those words make sense to them based on the experiences. what they have brought to the classroom, mm -hmm. their own conceptions, the explorations they've had, and then they can come to use the scientific vocabulary correctly and appropriately 
but not right at the beginning. Yeah, and that's that's tough. It's it's yeah, very counterintuitive, right. especially for a teacher who knows the language of science well, because mm -hmm. um, it helps the teacher make sense of it. So they want that same making sense for their kids. But right. doing it in a strategic manner with the five E's, mm -hmm. I think, helps a lot. So I'm thinking about other big changes, well, evolutionary changes that happen over.